Welcome back to Tech Tips. The ability to get your firearm into action quickly is key to top performance. In this segment, Olympian and U.S. Army Reserve Shooting Team member Sergeant First Class Keith Sanderson discusses the lift. Just to go over what I do from the holster to actually shooting. This is already a clear weapon, but I'm going to reholster it for instructional purposes in my magazine pouch slash holster. All right. There is probably a hundred different correct ways of doing this. This is just the way that I do it. And I'm real anal about the way that I do things. Whatever way that you choose, whatever technique that you come up with that you want to shoot at AFSAM, I'd say the most important thing is that you believe that is the, it is the right way, it is the only way. Does everyone understand that? you got to think that the way that you do it is the only way. You have to believe that when you're shooting to be successful. Now, there's, there's more than one way. Everyone understands that, right? But sometime between now and then, you guys, I want you to find your own path and find whatever way that is. Pick one of the top shooters, you, you, can, you can emulate them to, to start out with. All right, as an example, this is my way. So I'm, I'm looking at my target. Well, I'm gonna face this way for this, since this target's down there. So I'm looking down there. Okay, okay, this would be whatever, whatever stage. Unholstered. So I'm looking down here. I draw the, the pistol. Now I'm gonna hold on to the pistol with my non-firing hand like this. Do I hold on to it like this? Nope. Why not? There's two I reasons. One, because I don't want to get any sight black. I don't want to rub all my sight black off. So I'm real anal about sight black. Second reason is because I don't want to shoot the front of my hand. So I grab it from underneath like this. Okay. Then I place the pistol in my hand where I want it. And I take my time. And then you give the command load. Load! And I'm still screwing around right here. Okay, now I'm like, well, I'm not going to load, but... Okay, now I'm, I'm, I'm loaded up. <coughs> I grab onto the safety like this. I rack it straight back to the rear and let go. Slingshot method. Why do I do that? Make sure it's slam home. Simulate it, it, it simulates how you actually do it. Which I'm, what I'm about to do next is going to completely you know, negate that, that positive part of it. That's what I always do out of habit. There's two things you can do next. You can look at the extractor, which is a loaded round indicator. You can rub your finger on it. If it's popping out, that means it's around in the chamber. Or you see a little piece of red, or you can see that it's sticking out, that means it's around in the chamber. The other thing you can do is a press check. There's a couple ways of ways of doing that. You can go like this, a little bit. You don't want to go back where you rack around at. They won't understand that, right? Just a little bit. Another thing you can do, which I do, is I just go like this. Now in AFSAM, I probably won't do either one of those. I'll probably just look at the extractor. And I'll watch the round feed into the chamber when I when I rack the when I rack the slide. So now I'm like this. Weapon's unsafe. One of the things that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get in position. I'm gonna do a quick position check. I look at my feet, make sure that my that my feet are square. Now, even though we're shooting on four different targets at four different times, I'm not going to start out on target one and then move over and then move over and then move over for each additional target. You have time to do that. The reason why I don't do that is what I realize is I start on target one and I'd end up on that target bay. The targets are only like, what, six feet wide and I'd move like six yards. And I, and I was like, well, there's no reason to do that. Just pick one spot in the middle. Again, this is just what I do. Pick one spot in the middle and that's what, that's what I'm going to pick. So I check my feet. Okay. I make sure that my shoulders are square with the target, got a good grip. Now I'm going to come up like I would if I was going to shoot, where I'm like this, okay? Now you'll see me a lot in the match, I'll go like this. What am I doing? Checking your target. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm making sure that my sights stay aligned. If my sights are going in and out of alignment, that means I'm aiming like this, with just the pistol. That's lazy aim. You can't do that. You have to aim with your chest plate. So you point your chest plate, all this moves as one. Now why is it important to have, when you move from here to here, for your sights to stay aligned? Why would that be important? Second stage. Because position. when you switch to different targets, you need to have, you want your sights to stay aligned throughout the entire stage, right? You don't want to be like, move like this and then have to adjust everything for every single target. Wouldn't it be a lot easier if you just move your upper part of your body where you're like this and everything stays in alignment? Makes it a lot easier, right? The key to this game, like most of the games that we're playing here, like real life, is efficiency. Doing it the simplest way and doing it the correct, the most correct way you can think of, which is usually the easiest, simplest way. So it's the gives you the least likelihood of making mistakes, and that's what the game is about. So I'm like this. All right, now what I do, and this is probably a more advanced thing. I don't necessarily recommend it, but it's what I do, and that's what someone asked me. So I take my non-shooting hand. 
and I pull it, that's unsafe, I check that, because the negligent discharge is a miss at the very best case scenario. Worst case scenario, you hurt somebody or something and bad things happen. Or you're Italian. <laughs> so anyway. He's back there. He's oh, back he's there. not here for the benefit. All right. But I take my non-firing hand and move the trigger all the way back. And then I grab it with this. Now, when I take it off safe, I'm going to slowly release my trigger finger until just when it clicks. Now my finger's in a slightly different position than if I just threw it on there. That's what I do. Do I have to do that to shoot good? No, it's just one of those little things I'm anal about because I'm anal about every single thing that I do. So that's one of those things that I do. Now I'm like this. Now my grip is still, I've gone to the stage where I'm, I'm gripping hard, I'm gripping loose. Okay. Now right before they, they start, I'm gripping it loose. When they start running commands, when I know it's a, but they're about to start shooting, then I start gripping hard. Why do I start gripping hard then instead of after, until after I'm on the target? Okay, Why so would I not want to wait until after I'm on the target before I start gripping hard? Because you're pulling the trigger already on the way up. Because the trick, what happens is it takes you a couple seconds for your grip to stabilize. It's different for everybody, depending on the amount of training you have, depending on your body type and stuff like that. It takes a couple seconds for it to stabilize and become consistent. Now, through training, you'll, you'll find out how long it takes you and how long you can, you can only keep it hard and consistent for so long. And through training, we're going to extend that, that period of time, how hard we can keep it hard and consistent for a longer period of time to cover at least the whole course of fire. So now I'm like this. I'm about to run commands. Now I'm gripping it very hard. My shoulders are shrugged, but my head is dipped. My, my chest plate is square with the target. Now I'm ready to go. I'm burning a hole right in. I'm looking at the five ring circle. It's what I look at. I'm looking right at, at it, okay? And I'm, I'm visualizing. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, one, one for the 7654 drill, for instance. Okay? Okay, so I'm looking at it, looking at it. Watch and shoot, or yeah, watch and shoot, watch and shoot, or whatever the commands are nowadays. We'll figure that out when we get there, I suppose. Fire! Now, at the first syllable of fire, fire! You can't wait till you get to the E, or you're going to be out of time, how long they draw it out. So that's one of the things you want to start to get used to here. Fire! As soon as you hear fire, then you start, you start your, your, your shot process. All right, which for me is, again, in slow motion, like I covered yesterday, the, a couple days ago, Just like that. My trigger was a little bit slow. I haven't been, haven't been training. So I'll do it again. Ah! And good exaggerated follow through, right? All right.